All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is Monday, the 13th of June, in the year of our Lord, 2022. And I see tomorrow, I happen to run across this fact while I was trying to find some news this morning. Uh, tomorrow's Flag Day, I guess. Well, that's good. I have a flag out in front of the house, a Christian flag, which is the most important <laughs> Because it represents the only real and valuable kingdom on earth. The, the the kingdom of the coming king. The returning king. The return of the king, yes. Uh, but the uh, the battle is not... Uh, there will be a battle in returns. It's called the Battle of Armageddon. But it will not be in, uh, in doubt, the outcome. <laughs> See, when the armies of the world gather together to wage war against God Almighty... What's the outcome going to be? See, that's how delusional. It's one of the most amazing things in the book of Revelation and in the New Testament. It's not just the book of Revelation. Is that the return of Christ, the, uh, the humanity, sinful humanity, will actually be under such a delusion, they will uh, uh, seek to resist with, with human weapons. Uh, that's, um, mm. well, unlike the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, Jesus will speak a word and they will die. Uh, <clears throat> mm. He's God. He created everything. See, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and he is the creator. He is the of of the Trinity, which is not three gods; it's one God. But, but the the second person, the Word of God, Christ, is the one who actually is the 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 one who did the creation. <clears throat> All things are from Him and to Him and for Him. Uh, yeah. It's an inner Trinitarian thing. It's uh, perhaps one of the most difficult doctrines for uh, non-Christians to understand and Christians is the Trinity. But you just have to stop trying to uh, put God into human experiential categories and realize that God has revealed things about himself and just take him at his word. Just like you, I take God as his word that the earth is about 6,000 years old. And the earth existed before the sun and the planets and the stars by a day or two. So, and, but see, now somebody, that's, that's nonsense, really? You really believe what the so-called scientists say? The, the spontaneous generation, the Big Bang, uh, proceeding out of nothing, a quantum fluctuation, nothing. Nothing can't have a quantum fluctuation. <laughs> See, quanta has to have something to quantitize. See, all you know, the, the whole idea of quantums. Let's see, the, 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 it's basically at some level, nature might be digital. Uh, it, uh, the, uh, the, the, the world as we experience it uh, can't be reduced to the basic elements because, or beyond the basic elements, elements is in uh, atomic structures, but or atoms themselves, but the, the, the subatomic level, things don't function like they do in the physical world, so strange things strange things 
My wife has even heard of Schrodinger's cat. Apparently, she heard that on Big Bang, the, uh, the, the television show. Now, anybody that's actually read a little bit about Schrodinger's cat realizes how weird science can be because it's filled with weird people. See, it's there, there, we have to distinguish between the observation of reality, what we might call the facts, assuming we, you can reliably exam or uh, you can reliably establish them as facts. And the interpretation of those facts, the story, the narrative that's spun to explain those facts. Well, you know, it's just like in mathematics, given, say, three points, uh, you can. there's an infinite number of mathematical equations that will pass through those three points. So if those three points, for example, are facts or data points, uh, there's an infinite number of narratives that can explain them if you consider a mathematical equation as a narrative. In other words, there's an infinite number of functions, and even functions are, are more specific than a general mathematical things, that would, that would describe those three data points. Uh, just they, they might be a straight line, but there's still an infinite number of other functions that would pass through those same points. So uh, that it, there's... Um, there's a field of study called the philosophy of science, and uh, uh, Karl Popper was uh, one of the people in that, and he pointed out the logical fallacy of induction and why science is invalid. See, science can never, and a lot of sometimes you'll occasionally hear people say this: science can establish the falsehood of something. Perhaps I'm going to say perhaps because even that has problems. But it can't re, re, it can't establish the truthfulness of something, for the very uh, uh, problem of induction uh, and the, the th what I mentioned mathematically uh, is that there's uh, an infinite number of narratives I'll do, that, that descriptions that would f actually fit what we see. So they get more and more complex, but. So you might you might want to apply Occam's razor and say the the simplest is probably true, but again it's, it's probability. See that's the problem with science; it can't establish uh, things as certainty, although they convince the American people that they do, because it's in their interest. See they want to be the the high priests. Science <laughs> scientists are sinful mortal men like everybody else. And if you think they're beyond that, you've been deceived. You're you've become a, a a proponent of the religion of scientism, like like uh, dear Doctor Fauci, follow the science. Really, they were telling us things. I knew they had no idea what they were doing. You know, they they were just flinging, uh, thrashing about in the darkness, uh, the darkness of no data. Uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, when they were they came out with the masking and the six foot, and these were nothing but wild guesses. They didn't even know they didn't do nothing about this. Well, maybe Fauci did since he was funding this stuff, the research at Wuhan into into these very kind of viruses. And there still has been no real investigation of whether this thing was man-made or not, but rather a real cover-up of that, a, a suppression of investigations. Wow. See, the, this world doesn't want the truth. And those in power certainly don't want the truth to be known. It's just like right now, the, 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 the what is it, the uh, January 6th thing. That whole thing is a, a, a diversion from reality. It, it's a diversion from the truth. It's just a political stunt anyway. They just want to be able to tag some felony conviction on, on Trump. They want to make sure that he can't win the election in 2024. 
and I'm not sure that would be a bad thing that he can't that he doesn't run in 2024. I'm not sure that uh, well. Hopefully, there won't be a 2024. Jesus, come quickly. Uh, it, it would. This country is imploding. I don't even think it's capable of civil war. It's simply imploding. Uh, I mean, the explanation for these so-called ma- now, they, every, now I think every, everything that where more than three people are shot is a mass shooting. Well, that's a weekend in Chicago. How many mass shootings occur every weekend? See, when they play these Orwellian word games, and they play, they change the definition of things. It's just like an assault weapon. An AR-15 is an assault weapon. No, it's not. It's a civilian neutered version of an M16 or or the equivalent, the uh, whatever the short, crappy thing that you have now is. Uh, it it's uh, see uh, to be an assault weapon, it has to be able to fire full automatic. That's an assault weapon. If it can't fire full automatic, it's not an assault weapon. It's. <sighs> And full automatic, just spraying bullets everywhere, and most of them won't hit anything anyway. <laughs> well, they'll hit something. <laughs> but this is the, the problem. See, it, it's a diversion, just like January 6th is a diversion. It was certainly less of a riot than many of the Antifa Black Lives Matter events in Washington in the previous uh, years. The tearing down of of monuments and the assault on courthouses and things like that, you know, like out in the state of Washington, or Oregon, I believe it was, uh, that uh, the continual daily, nightly assault on the federal courthouse. Huh. And the 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 uh, Democratic Party and the media and everybody's support of those activities. That's surreal conspiracy to overthrow the federal government, the government of the United States. There was a real conspiracy. I don't know if it was, it was necessarily, uh, it was um, a conspiracy of ideology, though. It wasn't necessarily coordinated, although you certainly it appeared to be. Uh, the the conspiracy to overthrow the, the presidency of Donald Trump. While he was in office, how many attempts were made at that? That's the, that's what should be investigated. And I'm not a big fan of Trump. I think uh, he he's uh, less than what a man should be. In the sense that he is uh, does not have, uh, he's got too much ego. And he's, he's just full of himself. <laughs> now that's uh, that's which is dangerous. He's supposed to be a servant of the people, but that doesn't happen in America either. That's a that's a big, you know, what what you learned learned in eighth grade in civics is not reality. I'm just I'm just wandering around here, I guess. Stream of consciousness. But the uh, it's it's all distraction. I mean, that whole thing is a distraction. It's it's just political maneuvering. Uh, and I I think that may have I I know there were I have I'm not a historian, but I do know there was early attempts uh, way back in the beginning of the uh, uh, United States under the Constitution. Some of the political parties immediately began to uh, charge uh, opponents with things like treason because they oppose their agenda. <sighs> so this this kind of stuff is the the sinfulness of humanity is constant. It's just as it becomes more and more unrestrained, 
Now, now the, the mythology, you know, there's the whole thing of the mythology of history. The stories that we're taught are not what was. So often, so often, the only thing that's reliably true is the Word of God, the Bible. This is reliably true. Uh, translations do have mm, certain minor elements of corruption in them, but actually the King James is pretty good. The New King James is pretty good, the New American Standard. But you always have to be aware that, that when you translate a language, some of your previous ideas, like what words mean, go into that. And your particular theology will will influence how you translate things. Even if you're trying to avoid that, it's still there. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to avoid that and you can't achieve. For, you know, it depends on your purpose. Uh, often I find myself going more and more and more into the Greek. And the reason is that the questions I'm asking of the Scripture at times are like, okay, exactly what does this mean? What's it talking about? And trying to break through the historical narrative of of Darbyism or Calvinism or whatever it is. Because our thinking has been shaped in trying to find out, the, trying to penetrate that, that mist that we're raised with is, is difficult. It's a lifelong chore. <sighs> trying to penetrate Washington is now just bulldoze the whole thing into the sea. I'm not, I'm, you know, after thinking about it, the initial outrage is like, okay, uh, the idea of, of tearing down all the monuments might not be bad because they're not monuments to godliness. They're not monuments to Jesus Christ. Tear them down. What's the loss? Uh, I mean, Washington, why? We should not, these are our sinful human beings. And they were motivated by sinful desires. These were not, none of the founders were born-again Bible-believing Christians. They weren't. They're not a single one of them. They wouldn't have been part of the revolution. They wouldn't have been followers of the Enlightenment. They wouldn't have had said the stupid things that are goals that go unquestioned in America. Like one of the, the stupidest thing is human rights, that we inherently have human rights. Where? 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 Where does the Bible teach that? No, we have responsibilities to God. See, but the founders wanted to get God out of the picture as much as they could. Their God was the God of masonry, a, an abstraction that would, had no real, you know, it was... That it did, they didn't really care. See, Masons don't care. You're supposed to you're supposed to believe in God. But they don't care which one. They don't care if it's the God of uh, of uh, uh, Mormon or not the God of Mormonism. What do they do? What would Masons do with Mormonism? In case you don't know, Mormonism has bazillion gods. Mormons can become God. Not become part of God, not, not uh, individual gods with your individual world and creation and planet. It's bizarre. And they have magic underwear. Romney used to, wears magic underwear, I believe, because he's a Temple Mormon. There's Temple Mormons and there's non-Temple Mormons. But they, they, see, they're an example of the same problem. They conceal the, the real elements of their religion behind a facade of Christian language. Words like Jesus Christ and God. But their Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. And their God is not the God of the Bible. And it, it's, it's an entire fiction but it's dressed up in Christianese, Christian language. It's a deception. 
a really bad one. And Joseph Smith was a swindler. You need to read a little history about him. Uh, a swindler and a liar and a he was a, he was a treasure hunter and he would go out engaged in like dowsing and things or pra practices like uh, trying to he believed there was uh, buried treasure and stuff and he'd he'd get people to invest in his treasure hunting schemes. Of course, he never found any treasure, just like his golden blights that only Joseph Smith could see. And then he had to decipher it through his seer stone. So if you want to believe that stuff, well, it's God's judgment on you. God's judgment's on you. Because the Spirit of God does not direct you to Mormonism. And people wonder why I, I said I'd, I'd never vote for Mitt Romney for president or for dog catcher. Why? Because if you can believe Mormonism, you're nuts. <laughs> you're unsuitable for dog catcher because you're so far removed from reality. It's just, just like, I, I could say the same thing about Roman Catholicism, I suppose, too. It's, it's like their doctrine of the uh, transubstantiation, that, that the bread and the wine actually turn into the living body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. It, it is Christ himself. That's why they have a monstrance where they put a, a wafer on display, and you're supposed to worship the wafer, because they believe that is God, the presence of God right there. Um, and I would say, prove it. Prove it. That doctrine didn't even exist. It was not a doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church until about the year 1000 or 1200. I've got the evidence right here. Catholic evidence. What's the name of that book? Hey, I like going to the sources. Now, this is a book that Pope Francis doesn't like. Denziker's. The Sources of Catholic Dogma. And uh, you probably won't find it at Walmart. Let's see. Imprimatur. Patrick A. O'Brien O'Boyle, Archbishop of Washington, 1955. Dominic uh, uh, Nihil Oba uh, Stott, Stott, Dominican uh, Hughes, O.P., Censor Deputatus. Well, this is the translation, too. So, But anyway, it is uh, a Catholic publication ca a th uh, authorized to, for use by Catholics. Uh, and it is all the uh, dogmas of the Catholic Church uh, going back, let's see how far do they, they go back to, they start with the Apostles' Creed. And so you, you have when the doctrine was promulgated and by who and, you know, like, um, here's one, I don't know why I have a bookmark there, but it's uh, uh, Clement the uh, Eighth in, from 1592 to 1605. And the first thing I see there is uh, the faculty of blessing sacred oils. And then followed by the ordination of schismatics and the absolution of one in absentia. Anyway, all those so-called official dogmas are in this book. And so when... And this why Francis hates this is he comes up with things and, can, and the, the Roman Catholic Church says it never changes its dogma. This book testifies. See, it, it's just like uh, relatively recently. It was the latest defined dogma, pretty much. Well, I suppose some of the stuff Francis has done, like his green agenda, is that. Uh,
Got something else there. There's so much in here. Oh, I see that stuff on birth control here is under Pius the Twelfth. <laughs> now that's the appendix. Uh, the definition of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 1950. Yeah, see, before 1950, you didn't have to believe that, that, that Mary was taken bodily into heaven rather than her body decaying. And, uh, but after 1950, if you don't believe it, you're going to hell. Amazing. But yeah, the, the, the transubstantiation of the Eucharist, which many Catholics don't believe. But if you don't believe it, you're going to hell. <laughs> that was not a doctrine that you had to believe until like 1200. So how can you do that? See, the scripture tells us in Jude to contend for the faith delivered once for all unto the saints. In other words, it was just complete. There is no adding to the doctrine communicated to us by Jesus Christ and the apostles. You cannot add to the scriptures. So anything that's added is not true because it's not God's doctrine. That's one of the big problems with the charismatic movement. See, fortunately, the, the, our pastor at the local church here that I attend now Came, was able to come back. He preached. This is his second Sunday he preached now after some health problems. But uh, he, he made that point, too. Uh, he was talking about the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit doesn't teach us anything new. Right. Absolutely. Uh, because it's very clear that that's, the Scripture tells us that the faith was delivered once for all. And it, if... We don't have more information other than the availability of it. See, today, the, the, the Bible is so available. Nobody's got an excuse. There's very few places in the world where you can't, you don't have access to it, you know, especially with the Internet today. That's one, but the only good thing about the Internet. Uh, th that people don't read it because they don't want to read it. When I was down in Texas, I, when I had my ministry down there, printing ministry and other things, uh, I remember going through the neighborhood and I had a bunch of uh, Spanish uh, New Testaments. Neighborhood, I mean the, the local community there. And I wanted to make sure every house had one. I remember one of the neighbors down my street. I knocked on the door, and, and I and I, you know, I told him, I'm, "She's probably seen me around." I said, "Do you have a Bible?" I just want to make sure everybody has a Bible. He said, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." And she said, "Then I asked her, do you read it?" Now, this problem isn't unique to the Mexican border. Oh, no, no, no. I, 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 you know, I don't have time to read it. And I'm not claiming this is my own wisdom, but you, you never know what the Holy Spirit's going to have you say. He doesn't have you say anything. I mean, it's, uh, he moves you to in the right way sometimes. And my, but my response to that, oh, I get, she, her, he did, she doesn't have time to read it. I said, do you have time? Do you watch television? And she knew. I could tell, look on her face. She knew I had her. <laughs> I had her. It wasn't, it wasn't something planned or anything else. It just came out of my mouth. And that's one of the strange things. You'll, you'll find yourself saying things you never thought you'd say. And, and I said, do, do, you, do you have time to watch TV? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
So it's it's not that, see, God is, he exists. Everybody, the scripture explains very clearly in, in the first chapter of Romans is that no one has an excuse uh, as far as the knowledge that God exists because he's revealed his existence and his power through creation, through everything that's been created. So you're constantly, you, you live in a created world, a created universe, in a created uh, body, and you didn't, you're not self-existent, and you know you're not self-existent. You know this stuff came from someplace. You can see the beauty and everything else. Talking about nature, not man's creation. Not much beauty to be seen there a lot of times. Sometimes you see some. But you have no excuse because you know God exists. That's the evidence he gives everyone, no matter where you are. The the pagans or the Native Americans or whatever in the, in the year 1000 A.D., they had the evidence of creation. They had no excuse as far as knowing that God exists. And his, look at the world, and most, uh, most cultures have some understanding that there is the creator god there is uh, in the commonly in the native americans you have uh the grandfather you know the the one that's not the local deities but the that that mess with everyday life but this this transcendent high god uh, but People, so people know that, but they don't go seeking that God. They don't make that their, their, a, a continuing practice. Uh, the, the scripture says that there's none that seeketh after God. But by that, it, it, that's a continual sense there too. So it's, it, it, well, actually, it, it's in a Greek form that would say there's there's no people out there that make that their 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 main or their constant activity seeking god so but that's the most important thing there is god if god exists then he ought to be you know rather than than, than wasting billions of dollars putting space telescopes up that get hit by micrometeorites uh I mean, what is there to re what is the purpose of that really? Other than an employment program for scientists that have no other useful purpose in life, what is the purpose of it? Well, what they're trying to do is disprove the Bible. They're they're always looking for life somewhere else. They're always looking for some way to verify evolution, the existence without God, or the Big Bang. Well, the Bible says the Big Bang exists. God said in the beginning he created. There was a sudden explosion of existence. He created it. It had a beginning. Now, I can remember when I was like in fifth or sixth grade, I can remember when they, when we heard in class that some scientists with a relatively small radio telescope had discovered evidence of a Big Bang, a creation, uh, that the universe had a beginning. And before that, it was like steady state universe and oscillating universe and all kinds of other hypotheses that had no real evidence to any of it. But the big the evidence that they had uh, indicated a background level of microwave radiation that indicated there was a beginning. So they had some evidence to verify a particular hypothesis. Now, it doesn't say anything about what caused it. 
or actually you can't see if God exists then the whole thing changes because you don't know what state God created things in why would he create it in a, in a state of the Bible tells us how he did it he uh, it's just like the earth people would say well how how would uh, why do we see evidence of of long-term activity well you don't actually See, it's it's it's, uh, it's like atomic dating, uh, radioactive dating, where you're looking at, at isotopes and the ratio of one isotope to another isotope, like uh, uh, uranium to lead or atomic decay. But the assumptions made that uh, about a certain original original composition, and you don't know that. You're assuming that, say, it was all uranium. And then it, it decayed into lead. And you, you, you also make assumptions about the rate of decay and whether that's content, uh, uh, constant, constant and everything else. It's not true. You can't make those assumptions. But they make all those assumptions and then they put out their information as if it's established fact. But they have an agenda. The agenda to prove long ages in order to to somewhat bamboozle people about the possibility of evolution mathematically it's absurd absolutely absurd the, the 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 probability of it happening is zero just can't happen spontaneous generation of life cannot happen but they keep looking at for it. They're, they're absolutely this. That's what's called scientism. They're they are dedicated to the they're a religion of science. That there is no God. That everything happened without that. And who was that uh, rather famous guy in the twentieth century? Uh, I can't think of his name right now. But he, he confessed the reason that he was an evolutionist was is it freed him from moral constraints. He wanted to commit fornication without being bothered by it. The idea, get rid of God so I can sin and not be bothered. That, that I don't have to deal with the idea that someday I might stand before God to be judged for my deeds. See, there's a, a underlying drive in people, in sinful people, which we have a, we're a sinful race, to suppress the knowledge of God, because if you know that God exists then you know you may have to answer to him. And as, uh, as someone has said, uh, that God is and he has spoken. God, and it's like the Ten Commandments, which was only the beginning of the law. God has told us what's right and what's wrong. We've had that knowledge for, what is it, uh, 3,500 years. Law of Moses. You, you, why people hate that, why their people have, have created foundations and everything else to suppress the very idea of God is because they're condemned by the word of God. They're condemned as sinners, and they don't like that. They love sin. And they want to get rid of the idea of God because it bothers them. God's law bothers them. So it condemns them. Of course. Just like in culture today, they want to get rid of dr laws against drugs and gambling and, and all these so-called prostitution, all these so-called victimless sins, unless you're the wife of the man that's with the prostitute that's picking up venereal disease and he's committing adultery against you and the prostitutes committing adultery. Sleeping with married men, she's committing adultery. If she's not sleeping with married men, she's just committing fornication. See, 
but the society loves sin and hates God, and it manifests that all the time. Democracy is a manifestation of that. There's no biblical foundation. The will of the majority, well, the majority are, are sinners. <laughs> it's a stupid form of government in a sinful world. Because it guarantees you'll get a sinful president. They'll, sinners will elect somebody that, that will scratch their itch. We see that with everyone that's elected. It's so what's the majority, what's the majority itch out there that wants to be scratched? It's what they do. It's what campaigns are all about. This huge effort, you know, just think if we didn't have an election every two years, it would be much more peaceful. But this is, this is just insanity. You know, I didn't even come back here to talk about this, but uh, it, it, we live in a crazy world that suppresses the truth because it wants to suppress the truth. It doesn't want the truth. That's what I was talking about. Every, almost everybody in America has got a Bible. They just don't want to actually read it. Or if they do, there's some, some certain psalms or something that they apply to themselves in a wrong way, as if they're David being persecuted. You know, I, I know a prostitute that used to love to read the psalms. I imagine she put herself in the role of David. <laughs> she was evil but I mean she could be a nice person if it was if she if it would get her what she wanted you know you, you uh, some people you get a real education especially with some people where where their sin is so obvious other people their sin is respectable you know like bankers no I'm, I'm generalizing a bit there okay so banking is not necessarily an evil thing but uh, um, people that live for money for wealth for power for advancement for honor whatever these for worldly honors it's all sinful because the, the great commandment is what? You're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Everything that falls short of that is sin. We all fall short of that, don't we? Even born-again Bible-believing Christians fall short of that. We don't love God with all our heart. All the time. We still live in bodies of flesh. We're still, sin is still present with us, even if we hate it. What I was going to talk about, I'll get to it now, is the weirdness of YouTube. I, I mentioned, in fact, I saw a comment um, on one of the videos I've done on the reconstructed uh, Thinking Biblically YouTube channel about what happened to his original channel. See, I had about 1,050 subscribers. And the, the, the number, you know, it, it seems to start low. And then all of a sudden you start getting these subscribers. Subscribers, subscribers. And you're not promoting it or anything. Okay. And it starts rising rapidly like you'll get 100 subscribers a month. And then, like in my case, it got over over a thousand. You know, you, there's this magic number in YouTube, a thousand subscribers. But then you have to have so many hours of, of viewing too. But uh, see, one, that's the monetization threshold. See, once you got over a thousand, you can monetize your channel. You can get paid. I had no interest in that, and I said so publicly all the time. So, so I got over that, and it got up to 1,050, and it just, ee, just stagnated there. It just 
went up and down a little bit, but it didn't wasn't growing anymore. Like, this is weird. I'm not really changing what I did. Yeah, I don't understand. It's like, what's going on here? So, so I do have a certain scientific orientation. I thought, ah, but see, I don't believe in the creator. That like all the great scientists, they always believed in the creator. Uh, but I thought, oh, well, I think I'm going to take my channel down, erase it, and then redo it, start a n n new channel, start it from scratch. Because I didn't trust the uh, the stats from from YouTube. Now, there's something weird here. So now I did that, and now it's been up on YouTube again, or I don't know, several months now. And I haven't done videos every day, but uh, I don't talk that much about Calvinism anymore. But I've got 16 subscribers. 16. Okay, but so what's really weird? I almost feel like I'm been shadow banned. You see, this is the this is research into the probing the algorithm of YouTube, and uh, I, but I noticed the number of just saw the other day as I was posting a video. The number of views on the different videos, they're about say half of what I would have. Before, when I had 1,050 subscribers, a video might have, I'll say, 100 views, between 80 and 150, somewhere around there, 70 to 100, you know. Uh, with a thousand, over 1,000 subscribers. I've got 16 subscribers, and my videos get about half that number of views. Something's weird. <laughs> Something's weird. Either that or people are just afraid to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Of course, a view may not be uh, a watch, much of a watch. I think most views are limited to about 10 minutes. Uh, always, you know, you, you start watching a video and you go someplace else. And I do that all the time, too. But that that's, that's just strangeness. The algorithm... I was thinking about this a little bit. Is is structured? I don't intentionally or non intentionally to manipulate the creators. See, the purpose of YouTube and Google and Facebook, all these things are corrupted by the love of money. All of American society is corrupted by the love of money. The commercialism of everything. I'm not going to celebrate Father's Day. The church is going to have some father's breakfast thing, and I decided yesterday, no, we're not going to that, in lieu of church. Uh, I don't like that. because it, it's, it's not a biblical thing anyway. The Bible says honor your father and mother. It doesn't say honor your father and mother one day a year. I look back at the history quickly. These both Mother's Day and Father's Day, I believe, go back to like 1908, and some women someplace decide, "Oh, it'd be a really good idea," and they promote this thing. And of course, the politicians aren't going to vote no. And sure enough, they 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 got in. And then the the original, the first one was Mother's Day, and the woman that did that, she got it, she campaigned to get it uh, as a holiday, and then they spent the rest of her life trying trying to get it abolished. Because it immediately was commercialized, it was Im immediately became an excuse for, for the the florists and the the card sellers. It was all about money. It corrupts it, corrupts everything. And the love of money, the seeking after profit. It's just like uh, YouTube, uh, Google, Facebook. These are commercial companies. It's, they're about making money. That's their underlying purpose. It's like the news. It's the underlying purpose is to make money. It's not. America has been so obsessed with this. It's not like this is a, a particularly American thing too. Uh, a lot of cultures, the the making income, making money is not the prime motivation of life. 
it's a particularly American, um, well, not only America, but it, it's strong here. Very strong, like the overwhelming thing. To, to not do something for the purpose of getting money is weird. The IRS doesn't understand it. That somebody would run a business for the benefit of, of people rather than for making money. They don't understand that. It's beyond their comprehension. Because they're lovers of money. Obviously, <laughs> they insist on getting as much as they can from you. But the uh, this culture is so obsessed with this idea. And the algorithm and everything else is influenced by maximizing the income for YouTube. So YouTube, that's why you look what's, what's trending down there. It's mindless drivel. It's garbage. It's like all this. And this just reinforces this debasement and corruption of the culture. Social media has done nothing but corrupt American culture. It has made it so easy. To, and then they reward you. See, whatever is the most popular is probably not good because it, 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 it caters to the lowest common denominator. What will get the most views? Because th then the, to be monetized, then they use you as a, a vector for advertising. And, of course, there's also the, this vacuuming up of all your personal information and likes and everything else for the purposes of targeting you with advertising, it, which is for all for the purpose of selling you stuff, which is all about getting your money. It's utterly corrupt. The whole thing. And it amplifies the, the uh, tendency towards sin that always wants to pull people down. It reinforces that. I just, uh, yesterday, the Southern Baptist uh, 2022 uh, convention, uh, Southern Baptist really is a convention. It's supposed to be a missionary society. It's not supposed to be a denomination. But even the Southern Baptists are confused about that. Most people in the church don't even read the, the, uh, the Constitution and the incorporation documents of their own church. <clears> or <throat> understand what it's supposed to be. It's all about making them feel good. Just like YouTube. So it makes you feel good. So it's like, how do you get rid of all these websites that are constantly sending you videos on rain noise to make you fall asleep? I fall asleep on YouTube all the time. Anyway, and I never watch that stuff. But I, you know, I, I spend most of my time, in, you know, I think, at banning channels, and, and YouTube doesn't even care. Sometimes you ban things and they come back anyway. Oh, we think you made a mistake by that. Most they don't care. It's their algorithm doesn't care. It's all about maximum views for the maximum number of people. That's what it is. And what was weird, though, is I did a search on the Southern Baptist Convention, and I did several other searches using Southern Baptist that were that should not have been uh, directed toward the current convention. And what I get currently from the YouTube algorithm, search algorithms uh, on the Internet didn't used to be like this. Of course, you didn't have so many hits either. You'd get a... Uh, you could always go to the other end of the list of the results and, you know, see what other people didn't want to see. Uh, it, it, the uh, algorithm currently is very front-loaded with mainstream media. So you get, uh, you know, the so-called mainstream media that people don't watch anymore, ABC, CBS, PB, PBS, whatever that is, and <laughs> that kind of junk. Uh, writers, uh, uh what are their things? Just junk, junk, and 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 the the, the love of money has corrupted it all. 
and and it's uh, so it's it's being front loaded toward mainstream media, regardless of views. And then after that, it's how many people look at it. I don't want to find how many people look at it. I put a search term in. I want things that are specific to my search. And what I was getting was all kinds of stuff constantly on the convention and sexual abuse. That's not what I asked about. But that YouTube would just... See, it's, it's uh, popularity plus, plus their agenda. What the people in Silicon Valley think is important. It's not just them either. Uh, Julie Royce, uh, sort of an investigative Christian YouTube channel and blog, uh, she's done some good investigations on some things, including John MacArthur, Never go by what somebody says. Check it out. You know, when somebody brings something up and, you know, that should be a flag. You say, well, you know, let's see if this is true. Yeah, that certainly turned me off to John MacArthur. She, but she didn't, her stories didn't do it. I just say, okay, she's, she's saying this. Now let me see if her information is accurate. You can do that easily. Well, sometimes. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the search engines are front-loading it. This, this became a, uh, because my background goes way back, before, prior to Internet. I remember when Google first came out, there were search engines before that. And then Google comes out and it, be, it started becoming heavily commercialized. And search results, you'd start getting sponsored results. People would pay Google to pimp their stuff. And originally, you'd be notified, you know. You still see that once in a while, sponsored. Uh, in other words, you, 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 you pay to get at the top of the list. Pay to play. Payola in the music industry. It was a big scandal once upon a time. It's still around. It just takes slightly different forms. Just like outright bribery is called a campaign contribution today. You think politicians aren't influenced by corporations? That was probably one of the dumbest decisions the Supreme Court ever made. That corporations can can throw millions of dollars at a, at a candidate, and that's not going to affect what they do. Of course it is. Of course it is. Very few people have the moral integrity to not be highly influenced by that. Money makes friends. Yeah. The system's totally corrupted by the love of money, just like uh, the. The algorithms, and but of course they also program because they want to program moral values into their algorithms. But the moral values of, Sil of Silicon Valley are garbage, dirt, godlessness, wickedness, and because of that, that because of their atheistic hedonism that dominates. California culture, especially money culture, Silicon Valley, the wealthy in California, and uh, those kind of industries. So, uh, see, Christians, real Christians, have always been a tiny minority. Probably no more than 5% of the population. Born again Bible believing Christians. Very few. Evangelicals are. That's something different. That word becomes useless. But they are using, they don't know what they're doing in a lot of ways. Uh, they're, they're children of Satan and the deeds of their father they will do. Uh, doesn't mean they know that that's what's going on. 
but what they they just choose algorithms that produce results that appeals to them. But they're wicked. Whether knowingly or unknowingly. Or, or what they consider reliable that's utterly unreliable now. It used to be people like writers and Associated Press used to be relatively respectable. There used to be a, a an ethic in journalism where uh, you sought to establish, to, to, to try to verify the truthfulness of what you wrote, uh, and be responsible. Well, that's gone. It's gone. Nihilism, it's existentialism and nihilism, uh, in not that order, though, did that end. The idea that you could actually... Uh, uh, have some approximation of the truth. Some knowledge of the truth. Or that truth was something desirable. It's not anymore. The narrative is what's matter. The story, whatever produces the desired result, we are truly Orwellian in this culture. Be manipulated constantly in a very sophisticated level, especially on the Internet. Terrible. And uh, our mainstream media, television, that has just, has just become utterly, not, not just godless as an absence of God, but wicked. And that's always the way, because the sinfulness of humanity always pulls people down that once there's a certain restraint, even by the basic knowledge that God exists and God has spoken and told us what's right and wrong, there is a certain fear of God that provides some restraint. That is not godliness. That is, But where there is no fear of God, there's just utter debasement of humanity because God created humanity to be his image and when you abandon that when you abandon God you become a monster why do people today so commonly in the United States go out and uh, kill just to do it well the will to power, to, to establish their identity, their existential identity, to prove that they exist by destroying others. Philosophy produces fruit and produces often very corrupt and evil fruit. The idea that, that human beings can't know truth, so there is no truth, and the only truth that exists is your truth. Well, that doesn't provide a foundation for anything. So, who was it that uh, was it uh, Nietzsche and his will to power to strap to 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 be something? You have to prove that you can do something. Hitler was influenced by that. It doesn't matter what you do; it's the fact that you identify uh, did something. See, these people, it doesn't make them heroes, but it makes them known. So much of social media is about being followed by others, about ego. And it manipulates you and affects your value. See, the... The, va the un-Christian, ungodly values of Silicon Valley and fallen humanity are being amplified and used. Uh, th those very things are used to uh, judge whether something's uh, to be uh, promoted by social media and search engines. That's why you get the garbage you get. And it's, it's, uh, a, it's a feedback mechanism that amplifies human sinfulness 
and amplifies the, the uh, pull of sin down to the bottom. It's not good. See, human beings, sinful human beings, corrupt everything. Even something that would be neutral or good, they always corrupt it. It's like Christianity. As, as I mentioned, uh, Roman Catholicism, corrupt. Mormonism, corrupt. Uh, all the denominations, it, it, there's always this tendency to corrupt. The longer they've been around, the more corrupt they become. It's just the direction of this world. You want the Catholics comment on how many uh, how many denominations there are? Well, why are new denominations always starting? Because the old ones get corrupt and people have to leave them. It's just like right now, the Southern Baptists. They're utterly corrupt. Uh, a church has to leave that thing. They're not going to reform themselves. It's not possible. It's... Uh, because the institutions seek to perpetuate themselves, they become corrupt and they perpetuate their own corruption. And they resist change. And because they're not human, institutions are not human, they're not subject to the Holy Spirit and its conviction of sin. The institutions are not living things. can't fix them. There's only one thing to do with them is leave them. It's as if, as the old day when you, uh, some farming, primitive farming where you, you, uh, you, you farm a piece of land until it, it becomes pretty exhausted and you move on. Of course, that land will regenerate uh, itself, but it takes time. Uh, a field has to let, remain fallow, or it just gets becomes depleted. Uh, so it n needs to rest and recover. So that you'd move on, and it's like that in uh, Christianity too. I think you have to uh, once to, a movement becomes institutionalized, and it's time to move on because <laughs> it becomes frozen. It becomes. Uh, turns inward and no longer the, 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 the ones that started it had a fire perhaps with a true uh, desire to serve God but it usually doesn't last more than a generation or two then things harden it's like concrete while it's wet I mean, you, you've got a limited time you can work it. But once it, once it uh, sets, there's nothing you can do with it. Churches are all like that, too, I think. The institution. Not because, because, because they become something other than people. And American society, right now, seems to be Babylon the Great. Seems to be utter corruption. Those who, who you know, America, a Christian nation. Yeah, Israel was God's people, a holy nation. But God started to call them an adulteress because they went after other gods. Knowing the truth. They were worse than the pagans. Because they knew the truth. They had the law. They had knowledge of God. The, uh, Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they saw the miracles. And in spite of it all, their hearts turned back to Egypt. And they became worse than the pagans. Because of that. And God had to judge them. It's like they had to send Israel into captivity for 70 years in Babylon to consume that generation. You can't fix it. Start again. The children 
and the grandchildren brought some of them back, back to Jerusalem, back to Judea. Now, the whole world. Jesus said, the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. The gospel is available in all the world today. One way or the other. The end is at hand. And this world has heard the truth and rejected it. And it's institutionalized that rejection. Laws are constantly being established to suppress that truth, to suppress the knowledge of what God says is good, and to, and to glorify and promote and defend and protect and subsidize evil. That's what the Americas has become. Just what God describes it as in Babylon the Great the habitation of demons. That's what it is. Can't fix it. All you can do is move on. Christians have supposedly moved on. Christ has delivered us out of the domain of darkness into his kingdom. Well, Christians better realize that and start living that way, living separated from the world, in the world but not of it, or you're of no value to the kingdom of God. You probably haven't been born again. See, there is no peace for Christians in the world. Those that don't belong to God will go back to the world because they really don't love God. People become Christians for some reasons that are not because the Holy Spirit has convicted them of sin, of righteousness and judgment. People become Christians for reasons other than seeking to be justified with God, to be made right with God, to be reconciled with God. And those people aren't really Christians. And they really will not, the, the, and they corrupt the church because their heart is always drawn to the world. You find them all the time trying to justify sin. They're sinners and they want to justify it and want to be accepted as Christians in spite of their, the condemnation they, they have before God. Because they're living wicked lifestyles. You can't live a wicked lifestyle and be a Christian. That demonstrates that God is not working in you. Didn't say you can't sin. You can't live a wicked lifestyle. You can't practice sin. And if you deceive yourself thinking that you that uh, Christ has saved you in spite of your wickedness, in spite of your continuing to love sin, and to pursue it, well, you've just deceived yourself. Humanity's deceived. Self-deceived. That's part of the fall. It goes back to Adam and Eve trying to cover their nakedness with fig leaves. People still cover themselves with fig leaves. In an attempt to hide their sinfulness. Things don't change. Only God can change you. Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be born from above. You must be born of the Spirit. God must change your heart, give you a new heart, a new spirit. And he must forgive you sins. And he made provision for all this by sending his only begotten Son of this world, who is God, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you and for your sins that you might be reconciled with God. 
Whoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. Call upon him to save you from your sin and your sinfulness. That's the prayer God's waiting to hear. You're desiring to be reconciled with him rather than your desire for stuff and blessings. You've got to start there with being reconciled with God through faith and faith alone in Christ and Christ alone.